parts of the female reproductive and we can throw in some of the urinary stuff like we did for the male. So here, just turn it like that, you have your, your kidney, all right, and you're gonna have a, a tan tube that's traveling down and it's going to lead to the bladder. There you see the tube going into the bladder, that's gonna be the ureter, all right. Here's the bladder, the bladder's underneath here. Right, this is the uterus, there's the bladder. And then we open it up, there's the bladder, and there's the short urethra, and out of the body it goes. Right, so for the female, the urinary system is separate from the reproductive system, right? In the male, both systems shared the urethra in the male. So, external genitalia, we'll start there. Okay, so here's the pubic symphysis, right? There's your obturator foramen. This little mound of uh, fat here, that's the mons pubis. Okay. Here you have some of the skin folds, labia minora and labia majora. You can see some of the, well, this is not a gland, some of the accessory glands. Accessory glands in the female are not as robust, right? I mean, you have seminal prostate in the male. You have greater and lesser vestibular glands. Um, they're not, you know, they're producing secretions that are going to lubricate the passageways they're not as robust as, as the seminal and, and prostate. They do not contribute to what's happening here in the ovary and with the oocyte, right? They're more like the bulbo-urethral gland that's kind of producing a little bit of mucus and lubrication. Whereas the seminal and the prostate produce secretions that are vital to the function and survival of the spermatozoa the accessory glands in the female do not. Okay. This is the other part of the external genitalia, this blue thing here. If we open it up, right here, this is the clitoris. Okay. Clitoris. Internally, we have an ovary. We have what's known as a uterine tube, or was once called the fallopian tube. And it has components to it, meaning these little finger-like projections are the fimbrae, okay? And then it leads into the tube. And that's gonna capture the oocyte, the secondary oocyte, when it's ovulated, when it leaves the ovary, the fimbrae capture it, and then it begins to make its journey to the uterus. Here's the uterus. Okay, you can open it up and see the uterus sits above the bladder. Mm -hmm. And as you know, there's two ovaries. There's the other one, ovary, with the red fimbrae and the uterine tube. Okay. And then you have, you can see from the outside. Here, okay, the vaginal canal, and that opens up to the outside, here by the labia, and here from the inside, the vaginal canal. And if you see that lining, the mucosal lining of the vaginal canal is folded, it has rugae, and that leads to the uterus. So theoretically, we would want to deposit the spermatozoa right here at the opening, the entryway into the uterus. The beginning of the uterus is known as the cervix. The folds next to that are the fornix. The external os is the opening into the cervix, uh, into the uterus. And there's a little canal. So there's an external os, the opening in little canal, then there's an internal os, and then you're into the body, okay? 
The top of it is called the fundus. There are layers to the wall. The innermost layer, which is in pink and red, that's the endometrium. That's what's going to undergo hypertrophy each month. During the menstrual cycle, this will thicken in anticipation of the arrival of the fertilized egg. The wall is mostly muscle. That's the myometrium. That's going to become active during birthing. That's what's going to contract and push the fetus out, the newborn out. And the covering is called the and white is the perimetrium.